to rake it in in tips. <laughs> I say the same for us both, mate. <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe but you more than me, bro. No, no, no. There was days, don't, don't get me wrong, there was days where you'd do like 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds in tips. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I was good at get I was good at upselling products mm. and getting people to pay more for services, obviously for what they needed anyway. Yes. But you would obviously rake it in in tips. Yeah, yeah. But like, how'd you do it so good? I think I just kind of ask them and tell them that I'm, I'm just dead broke and I'm going out with my missus tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Can I tell you something? It that? works great, doesn't it? I used to work in a barber shop and one of the barbers used to, used to say, as the last client would leave, he'd turn around and be like, oh, he gave me a five pound tip. Oh yeah, and then everyone else got to, yeah, that's it. That's how you know that he's looking after all the boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, how... Um, how 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 did you manage to rake it and then tip so well? That's a good. That's a very very good question. So, the number one way that I did it right in it was it was all through like, um, it was all at the very very beginning. Okay, as soon as as soon as before the service has even started. Oh, so when they've walked in the door. When they've walked in the door, right? You know, you, you have to greet people. Like you know, there, there's just. There's a lot of, oh, you what, mate? You know, yeah, we've seen yeah, that. Yeah, 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 all, all the time. And before I dive into that, have you ever seen, like, we used to get this quite a few times with some of the barbers that we used to work with every now and again. You know, at, at the end of, like, the day, you know, the customer that just walks in last minute, I know it's the most annoying thing. And I'm not going to say that you should take him on. No. But as soon as they walk in, sorry, we're shut. <laughs> Jesus The, door, the door's Christ, only bro. opened, like, a quarter of an no inch. No remorse. <laughs> Whereas, sorry, we're shut. <laughs> sorry, we're shut. And it was just like, yo, chill, bro. Well, I don't want to come back here. Yeah, I'm not going to come back. I wouldn't come back. I wouldn't. Uh, some people do, but I don't under I don't understand why. But I I, I get it. Like, I get it's annoying. It is it, it is hella annoying. And you know, they sit down in your chair and they just go like, you ask them, you know, what you've been up to all day, and they go, oh, nothing. Just been watching TV. <laughs> so you decided to come now. <laughs> yeah, we, I thought it'd be a bit more quiet now, wouldn't it? We close in five minutes. You've been off all day. Yeah. But look, anyway, back to the point, you know, yeah. um, tips. It, it's all about your, 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 your client consultation, right? I think, I, I feel like that's the most important part of the whole process. And the client expectation um, really dictates how the whole service is going to go, however long that service is going to take, you know? And, and the moment they sit in your chair, you know, I remember being w way back before I was a barber. You know, I was I was a little bit, I wasn't extremely, I was I was a little bit picky about my hair. Um, but still are picky about your hair. <laughs> and it never looks great still. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I used to walk in, I used to just have a bit of anxiety. Not, not a massive amount. It's just like, you know, who's going to cut my hair? If they can do it good. If they can do it good. But more importantly, like, is what I'm about to ask for uh, is it stupid? Is it in style? Is it you know, a normal haircut? W will the barber that I explain the haircut to laugh at me? Will he understand what I'm trying to go for? You have all these questions, right? Yeah. And especially if it's a busy day, you're kind of just sat there and you're just looking at the barbers and you're just, you know, counting. You know, the clients go by and you just think, okay, he's gone in next. So I think I'm, I'm next. And that guy looks like he's about to finish. So let me try and adapt myself towards his his aura yeah yeah you know is it, yeah yeah that like, was, do i spud him do i have to shake his hand yeah i know <laughs> i know right because like barbers are like re respectable you know respectable professionals it, exactly so um i like to think of 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 the client as if i was in their shoes okay right and then the moment they sit down it's cool i try and mirror them right yeah you, yeah you, you might have a bit of a a bit of an old boy a bit of a geezer that comes you know sits in your chair works in construction doesn't really give a shit about, you know, his, uh, his hair. Not massively. No, he's got a hard hat, you know, on, hard hat on all day. He, he wants to go home, shower up, get ready, get out for the weekend. Yeah. You know, pub with the lads. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you sit there and have like a, you know, a, a, a two minute conversation before the service has even started. He's just going to go, mate, have you cut my hair or what? You know, <laughs> I've seen it happen. Yeah. Like, oh, all right, love, stop with the small talk. <laughs> yeah, just, just crack on. <laughs> Um, so you got to be able to mirror yourself, like number yeah. one, and 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 the second thing is, 
you just really have to pay attention um, to what they're saying, yeah. right? And you just have to like nod and just let them know that you are taking that information in and that you yeah. are understanding them, yeah. right? And the next thing is like, just be careful of like <clears throat> any opinions that you give. You know, you, you might be trying to go for like a picture on Instagram that you've really, really wanted to do. And he looks like he has that sort of hair and it's got that sort of content that you want for your Instagram. You know, don't just sacrifice the the the, the hairstyle that he wants for for the sake of you Getting wanting creative. to creative. Yeah, man. And 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 that puts forward, you know, the customer, you know, first. Yeah, puts and, their and, interest and, first. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and and you've got their best interests at heart. Okay. okay. And and the moment they realize that, they'll look after you. It's just, it's as simple as that. You know, and then obviously you have things throughout the service. You ask them a few hair related questions. It doesn't have to, you don't have to necessarily give them, you know, small talk about what they, what they have to do, what they're doing over the weekend and so on and so forth. They've come in for a haircut. They've come in for a service. You can obviously small talk them, but when it, when it does come down to tips, I think personally also comes down to, you know, with regards to the haircut. Yeah, number yeah. one with regards to the haircut. But at the end of the day, the one number one reason they're there for you is to get a haircut. Um, and I, I, I've seen it. I've Whereas seen... with you, you used to just chat a lot of shit, and you still, you still used still to get, get a tips, lot of yeah. a lot of tips. <laughs> but, but but it it just goes for, goes to show from both aspects. As long as your customer service is on point, you can get tips, or you can go down the other side of the of the scale mm -hmm. where. You don't even talk to your client because your client might not even want to be spoken to, but they want a 10, 10 trim. And you yeah, can I've seen that before. Yeah, I've seen you do it. And you, you know, give and them... they don't talk and they just give you no feedback at the end. They put their money where their mouth is, pay for the trim. 10 pen tip. Banging. Done. Just what a sick guy. Yeah. And they just go, you know, what's your name? Give you a handshake. Cool. I'll be back for you next time. Bish, bash, bosh. They didn't even need to say a word. They got the haircut they wanted, gave you your money. Yeah, you made them happy. They're happy. Gone. Done. There's nothing worse than when you try to like force a client into conversation. Mate, it's you. awkward for them, and you can see it. They're sat there like, I don't really want to talk. I've come here to relax. Yeah, exactly. They're just they just got a lot of shit on their mind. They don't really want to think about. And you know what? I think for men, like put myself in the client's perspective, mm. when not before I was a barber. The one reason I'd go there is it's kind of like a spa day for men, isn't it? Yeah. Like a lot of men plan their day around their trim. Yeah, 100%. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going for a trim on Saturday. So I'll probably go there for two. So I'll get ready before then. I'll spend about an hour, two hours, chill with the lads down there, have a laugh and and, and, re and relax. Like a lot of, for a lot of men, it's like a spa day for women, uh, for men. So like, you know, when, you, when you're doing haircuts, right? <clears throat> and you've got this idea in your head of, of you're here and you want to get, you want to go there. You want to, you know, keep growing. What What is it for you? Is it like you just kind of rely on, on the footfall when you just smash out, you know, quantity? Or is it or is it like the quality as well? Like quantity versus quality essentially is essentially what I'm sort of asking here. Well, when you say when you're trying to get there, it depends what there is. Just like maximize how much you can earn on whatever you're earning. Cool. So... I think I'll, I'll I'll hit this one from both aspects. So in terms of what you want to do, so for example, if I want to go down the educational route, I want to get into a bit more um, magazine work, editorial work. Bear in mind, as in you want to you you want you want to just kind of maximize on your income. Maximize my income. Like let's just say you're on commission. You know you don't want anything more than that for the time being. You just want to maximize how much you make per week. You know, what are you doing? Are you just going to thrash out the haircuts, you know, as quick as you can, get as many in as you can? You know, what's, how are you going about it? I think, I think it's a balance of both. And this is one thing I learned from our friend Dinny over in Switzerland mm. is you want to be able to provide quality in a salon, in a salon time. So you want to get as many haircuts as you can possibly with quality, if that makes yeah, sense. It's, it's hard. It's fine and a fine line. It's very hard. And I've seen barbers where they sacrifice the quality for quantity. They've made four, five, six hundred pounds in a day. Three months down the line. Three months down the line, their their shops closed. I think, I think it's a matter of you kind of. You need to know the, the fine line. 
yeah, you, you need to know who you're dealing with. Mm. You need to understand, you know, who's witnessing it. And what I mean by that is, you know, is it a busy Saturday and there's like six, seven, eight clients waiting and they're all looking at the barbers. Cause I remember, you know, post barber when I was just, you know, working in retail. You're sitting there watching the barbers. Oh, a hundred percent. Mate, all eyes are on you. Look, it's funny you say that because one th- one story I always tell our students is before I was a barber is the w- I would never, ever, ever look at the trims that the barbers were actually doing. It's how I'd, they carried themselves. It's Number one, it's how they carry themselves. And number two, I was looking, who's the freshest geezer in there? Yeah. Like who takes pride in themselves? Who's, who's tool, whose station is clean? Whose shoes are squeaky clean? Whose clothes are fresh? Because at the end of the day, like we judge, like we judge straight away. Yeah, of course we do. Hu- human yeah, beings, absolutely not. Not good to judge a book by its cover, but we do but we naturally. Do. Absolutely. And and bro, like the minute I walk into a barber shop, if I see someone with holes in their shoes, like mm. dirty clothes, not ironed clothes, like I don't want him to cut my hair because if he can't take care of himself, how is he going to take care of me? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I think, like, mate, as an as an overview on that point right there, I just feel like. It's, it's most important to just understand that there are clients that you can get away with, you know, just in and out. And some clients want in and out. Some clients don't actually want a good haircut. They want short. True. I've had clients that just go, you know, could you do my hair in seven minutes? Of course I can. I'll do it in six. <laughs> if I do it in six, will you give me a tip? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true it's true and i think it's just finding that balance of number one knowing what you can get away with no knowing, knowing where, who wants you to get away with a quick haircut and number two really refining your technique so you can pull off a good haircut in salon time because at the end of the day if you number one you want to make your money and number two importantly you want to make your clients happy and to make them come back to maximize on your career you need them to come back you need client retention yeah absolutely man i think you just have to be careful like there's there's some there's some clients you will completely misjudge like there's some clients that massively you know they've they're a mate of of your most loyal client they come in they haven't really said anything you know they just kind of want to see what you're like and you just think that they're a walk in yeah you just you just you just thrash out the haircut and And then you lose two clients (laughs) It maybe happens. maybe not too. Maybe your loyal client client will come back, but he will tell you. He will, he will say you messed his hair up, bro. Yeah. What was that? Like I know you wouldn't do that to me, but what was that? But I think you know. I think it's the motivation behind it as well. And what I mean by the motivation is like the pay structure of of the barber, you know. And I get so many questions all the time, like, how do I increase on how much I earn? Well, first it's like your your foundation. Like, what pay structure are you on? Does that, does that make sense? Can, can you elaborate on that? Like the pay structure that are you on commission or you want rent a chair Okay. and, and you know, or, or if you're on from, if you're on commission and how, how do you go on to rent a chair and all that sort of stuff or percentages? Well, yeah. Commission. Yeah. And you know, I think, I think if you're starting out, you know, I, I, the, the most ideal situation, right? The most ideal like barbershop who, who really knows how to handle business would in a sense give you some sort of contract and say, you know, look, let me give you for the sake of it, you know, 60, 70 pound a day, just, just for the sake of it. Yeah. You know, here's seven, here's, here's 70 pound a day for the next four weeks. You're guaranteed to earn that. Um, I want to give you a bit of a trial. I want to see what you're like. Um, and if, you know, and, and if you're new to the industry and if you're a little bit slow, that's cool. You can take your time, you know, as long as you don't rush and mess up your haircuts, you're guaranteed this money. Right. Yeah. And if they like you, they'll they'll keep you on, and then they'll put you onto some sort of commission. Um. But what they'll actually do is they'll they'll kind of have a have a spreadsheet, and if they've lost any money, you know, um, by paying you a guarantee pay over the first four weeks, they'll take that into consideration and go, okay, cool. You know, you're ready to go on fifty fifty now, as an example, on, on, yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah, on a fifty fifty split. Um. So if the haircut's twenty pounds, you take ten, and I keep ten. Yeah. Um. But what we'll do for the time being is I just want to earn. I just want to fairly. No, break even. I just want to break even with you first. And this is the amount you owe. <clears throat> I think, you know, with the speed of your trims and the quality of your trims, and, and this is how much we charge, I think we'll break even in two weeks. As soon as we break even, you know, let's 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 put you on a 50% commission um, and then we can review things. Yeah. But I just think that 
you know, barbers sometimes just jump at the first opportunity. And I've met some barbers who have worked for the same brand for like six years. Yeah. And, you know, they've told me, you know, I've, I've been employed for the past six years. I don't know how self-employment works if I was to come on come on board with you guys and, and work with you. And self-employment is actually very, very simple. Like a lot of people don't understand how easy it can actually be. Yeah. And then but, you kind of just, but you, but you just asked them, oh, so you've been employed for the past seven years. You know, can I get an approximate on your earnings? And they've just been like massively, massively devalued. And and mate, there's, this is a barber of seven years' experience, and they don't know. And I bet they give quality haircuts of as well. Of course they do. Service. Yeah, mate, they're sick and they're so loyal as well. But they they just haven't been treated right. And the the thing is, so, the thing is that that's one thing that I see with salaries. Like I do know some some barber shops and some companies that offer salaries, which if it works for you, it works. But for me, um, for example, like I know the earning potential that there is, isn't it? being a barber hmm. like if someone was to offer, offer you x amount for a salary but you know okay i'll charge 30 pound a haircut i can do two of them in, ha- in half an hour right in an hour in an hour you, you can you can get i've seen i've seen it done <laughs> only i've you, seen mate. it done yeah. i've uh, yeah. seen it done <laughs> only you. yeah i can do two i can easily do two of them <laughs> all right cool yeah that's 60 pound an hour yeah and as long as i put my email lists into play my marketing True. strategies into play I can make sure I'm fully booked all day, every day. Yeah. No, I, I I totally agree. But I think it just boils down to, you know, I just see barbers, they just take the first opportunity that they get. They just jump into bed with someone. They don't know who they are. You know, they don't know what, what the next step is from there. And they just kind of get comfortable. And, you know, I think it's just important that wherever you go, you just have a discussion and just find out, you know, if you was to take a next step, what would that next step be? Yeah. And what would it look like? And, and would both parties be happy? And you know, I think if you are, especially for people who are starting off in the industry as well, if you are getting offered um, a, posi- a position where the pay structure is too good to be true, do your due diligence. Do your Yeah, homework. man. I mean, because you, people get sold a dream all no, bro, the time. I, I've heard it so many times that like someone's, someone's, someone's literally just started becoming a barber. And like, yeah, we'll be dish- busy in here, blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, but, they've just but, opened up and, and they just fall into the trap and they haven't even, you know, just gone to a cafe, you know, just, just down the road where you can visibly see that barber shop. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, and, and just view it, you know, on a, go there on a Monday, on the Monday, the most quietest day of the week, and then go see there if on it's a Saturday busy, if it, and, 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 and see if, see what both, um, and mate, I've, both, I've heard stories. Like- I've heard stories where people have been offered their first first barbering job seventy percent, seventy seventy five percent. How does that business stay alive? Exactly. How does that run? But and then you and then it makes you think: Why am I getting so much? Because seventy percent of two haircuts isn't a lot of money. I mean, I've I I I know of people that get seventy percent. It's very very rare. Very rare. Uh, you know, if you if you're on seventy percent, you can expect that that individual is 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 definitely doing um you know managerial tasks definitely yeah maybe yeah. managing the business from a marketing perspective from a numbers perspective admin perspective so on and so forth but you know to get 70 percent, i i think that's rare i think and the, the next step up from 50 50 is kind of like you go 60, 60. 40 for for the barber yeah 40 percent for the barber shop and then the next step up from that is 65 if that i think the next move from that would be rent a chair yeah, fair. But you know, if 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 let's say you're on rent a chair, you need to you need to make sure that that is viable. That is viable, and you know that you're going to be busy uh, did, because did, hey, look, rent a chair. It's like it's, it's like, like you, renting a house. It's like no, it's like you own your own barber shop now. Yeah, exactly. It's like you have you have a chair. You, have, you have a have, commitment. You have a commitment. You know, you thought you you know you're ill. You can't come into work for a week. You still have to pay for that chair. Mate, you, you still got to pay for that chair. You, you go on holiday for a week. You still have uh, to pay for the chair. It's, it's kind of like, you know, I have an academy here. You know, let's say I, um, w- we have a quiet period. You still have to pay rent for that month. I was, the staff have got to be paid. Yeah, you exactly. Know? There's no negotiations. When you, once you choose that, you choose that. You've got to be you know, solely dedicated. You've got uh, to make that work. And I think in terms of like starting out, in terms of pay structure, I think that in the ideal ideal world, it's kind of like what you said. Number one, you want to start on a day rate with at least six months time to build your clientele, then renegotiate and ask for a percentage, ask for a commission in for 
six months' time to a year to be able to renegotiate for chair rent. At least yeah. that way, it gives you a month um, to a year and a half to build up your clientele and maximise. But you see, that that's a very, very important thing. And there's a, there's a very important consideration that needs to be made there because if that hasn't been, you know, conversated between yourself and the barbershop owner. Both of you don't know what you want. And both of you don't know what you want. And then, you know, a year down the line, you just demand something and then the relationship goes sour. Yeah, he'll be like, you've, whoa, 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 you haven't told me this. Yeah, and, and you've got you've got to move out. Um, you know, you, you might lose a, a big clientele. Yeah. Um, and then the barbershop, you know, loses a great barber as well. And it's a loss on both sides. I think even when you do go and rent a chair, you know, the barbershop doesn't want to lose any money. So, you know, what they will require in terms of a of a, of a rent a chair will be based on 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 the commission that they've that they've earned from you. Yeah, because they can't so they can't lose more money than they've already. Ah, absolutely, exactly. they're absolutely. Because always... then yeah. they'll just say, "Well, I'm not going to give you you know rent a chair when I'll be losing out on this much." When really, like as employ... harsh as harsh as it sounds, I can just let you go and employ someone else on the same percentage and 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 not lose out on money. So, what's your offer? Yeah, you know. But yeah, with it, with that being said, I think that's kind of how I go about about you know making sure that. Uh, and and it's just one of them. Like you want you want to you want to like like it's going back to what we said. Like you want to do your due diligence. Like seventy percent of two haircuts is not a lot, but forty percent of twenty four haircuts or twenty haircuts on a busy Saturday is a lot of money. That's it. You know, don't don't jump at the first opportunity. It might right. sound too good to be true, and if it is too good to be true, maybe. I I think if you're looking at percentages, you really need to look at the prices that that shop's charging and really boil down to the numbers of what your earning potential is. Because like I just said, 70% isn't a lot of, isn't a lot if you're not doing a lot of haircuts, but 40% can be. Exactly. I mean, you know, 40% is, is, is a fairly, you know, it's a low fit. It's a low percentage, but yeah, I've, I've seen, I've seen people make it work. I've seen a lot of people. You know, make I've, it seen, work. I've seen, I've seen people make it work. You know, like you say, 40% of, let's say it's a 50 pound haircut. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I'll take that. Oh, on the Saturday, I can smash out twenty then. Yeah, well, considering that you're, you're charging fifty yeah, pounds, yeah. Obviously, your customer service <laughs> they're not, needs they're not to be, be five course, minute trims, are they? Of course, uh, but there 10, are ten. Ten, I can smash out ten. <laughs> <laughs> A couple more than that, but maybe twelve. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I think I think that as as an overview of of, of what you should look look out for in the industry, and and yeah, so. Yeah, I, I, I personally, I think, I think if anyone, if anyone is interested, I think that's definitely the route to go down. And that's another episode of So You Want to Be a Barber.